Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Continuing the series about mindfulness. I know a few weeks, a few weeks, a couple months ago, I think I did a talk actually, it was Mindful Living, Mindful Loving. And I loved it when Melanie said we were going to take six weeks and continue this journey of mindfulness. And I'm going to ask you a question because it was coming up for me as I was listening to Lori sing. What was happening with you as you were listening, as you were feeling, as you were sensing, without thinking about it, without a story around, oh, I'm feeling this, or yes, wow, I'm sad, and, and giving it a descriptor, just being present with what was there for you, without a label, without an opinion. Just noticing. To me, that is mindfulness. Being so present and just allowing what is there to move in, to move out. That's life. And her song about Bambi's journey, and like she said, it's the journey for all of us. It's no different. Because in the mind of God, we are already whole. Bambi is already whole. In the body of God, we are already whole and perfect. Every cell in our body is already perfect. Vital. It already knows it has that divine intelligence in it. So, here we are in this physical body. And that's why I wanted to focus the talk this morning about healing. And on transformation. I know Melanie gave you a lot of information last week, and I loved it when I was listening to her talk. I was actually in Gainesville last week speaking at the Unity Church there, and I couldn't wait to hear her talk. And I could stand here this morning and give you statistics, and, and I could go right after what Melanie offered, because what she offered to you was very, very valuable. Because it's great when we have the research. It's great when we have the data that says, yeah, if you practice this, Perhaps these things will happen for you. But to me, it's when the rubber meets the road and I say, what am I willing to do? What am I willing to put into practice for myself in this physical body so that I can be, what? Healthy, whole, vital? So I put cultivating mindfulness for the health of it. Why not? To me, it's more than just cultivating it. It's more than just practicing it. It's becoming the embodiment of it. So that as you walk throughout your life, and you walk throughout your day, and you walk throughout each moment, by moment, by moment, that you are the essence of mindfulness. What are you sensing right now? When you hear my words, what are you aware of? So today I brought my baby gong, if you will. You've seen the, the middle-sized one. And I brought, a bowl, I brought a bowl, a crystal bowl, and a little Tibetan bowl. And what I'm going to do, perhaps at times, is just integrate some sound. I want this to be a little more experiential for you. Because to me, that's what life is. It's about being in the experience of it and continuing to notice to be the observer of what is happening within you. Because as we are able to do that, we can change those habits, the ones that Melanie spoke about last week. I, and I think a few weeks ago, uh, my talk was a science of deliberate creation. And what I spoke with you about then was that those schools of thought. Do you remember that? The dominant thought pattern that we have that we weave out with the loom, if you will remember, was our, our deeper mind, our subconscious, to where we are always offering something to it. So if I'm wanting to create health and well-being, being mindful, being present with what is streaming through me right now, and saying, yes, do I believe that I can change that? Neuroplasticity, that was mentioned last week. There are so many different ways, because your body, as I said a moment ago, and everything that you are about already knows wholeness. It already knows well-being. And you are, in this moment, already that. It's the human mind, it's our thoughts and our stuff and our stories 
that tell us differently. So when we become more acquainted with the dominant thought patterns, and we begin to pay attention to what is a dominant experience that is being revealed to me in my life, we can take responsibility and say, I want to create something different. Maybe I need to re-examine my belief system and say, do I believe in this moment that I truly am created in the image and likeness of, and within me I am already whole and perfect? To me, healing is being able to be with what is in life in any moment. And when you can be with what is, as your thoughts are streaming through, as life is happening, and you're having your reaction, your responses, if you can say, I can just be with what is, to me, that is freedom. That is being liberated. And no longer being a prisoner within the confines of that consciousness that you probably are already engaged in. And in that place of freedom, <sighs> wow. What happens? Life, vitality, wholeness, all of those things that are of a higher vibration, they stream through you because now there is an opening. There is a space for healing to already expand, not just from within you, but out into the world. And in that place, that's the transformation, is what I believe. Be transformed by what? You know this, the renewing of your mind. That divine mind that is so, it's vast, it's endless, it's ineffable. There are no words. Wow. Is that amazing? Or what? I think it's beyond amazing. As we rise into awareness moment by moment, on purpose, non-judgmentally 10,000 flowers in spring the moon in autumn a cool breeze in the summer snow in the winter if your mind isn't clouded by the unnecessary things this is the best season of your life If your mind isn't clouded by unnecessary things, it's always the best season of your life if you are willing and open to say, wow, life is truly amazing. And I am connected. I'm interconnected. I'm part of the whole. I am not separate. No matter what is happening in my life, in this now moment. And if you forget where you are, if you forget what time it is, you know what? The time is what? It's now. Even this morning we had what? To set our clocks ahead? And I went to bed last night at 1 o'clock, I was sharing this earlier, and I had notes all over my house because I wanted to be mindful to set my <laughs> clock back, right? <laughs> well, I went to bed at 1 o'clock, <laughs> so I was laying there, and I couldn't go to sleep. I just had things on my mind, and it was okay. I was just processing, and then I knew I would fall asleep. And all of a sudden, I went ding, ding, ding. Set the clock back. Set the clock back. And I was, okay, I need to set the clock back. Otherwise, I'm probably going to be here right now. Uh, but in any case, I had already set an intention to be mindful. I even texted <laughs> Melanie <laughs> about today, and I said, and don't forget to set your clock back. Isn't that funny? How we're always talking about it and, and, and maybe giving ourselves cues and prompts, but in that moment, it's easy to, what, fall asleep. I know I was listening to John Kevin Zinn the other day, I know Melanie mentioned him last week, and he said, sometimes this is just simply called falling awake. It's time to fall awake and to be present with what is happening in your life. I like to, to imagine it as this garden that we are cultivating. And we are sowing these seeds so consciously. And how perfect that it's spring. How perfect that we can grow this garden of mindfulness and know that the bounty that is going to what, be down the road here, depending on what you're planting, of course, 
when people time their, their gardens, and what you're wanting to enjoy, what you're wanting to share. Because to me, when we have a bounty, it's all about sharing. It's not just for me. It's something that I want to share. So I invite you, as we move into this beautiful energy of spring right now, to be very mindful, very conscious of the seeds that you're sowing. So that as they are popping up in the soil, if you will, of your consciousness, what is arising for you, that you have more than enough to share. That your bounty is truly endless. And in that place, again, of connectedness, in that place of sharing, to me, that's healing. That's transformation. And, and we do it individually, and we do it as community, and beyond these doors, and beyond this community, excuse me, right here. There's a wonderful poem, and perhaps I've read it before, but it certainly bears reading again this morning, and it's by Rooney. Because to me, this poem has, has really had a very powerful impact on my life. And I was introduced to it about a year ago. Because it's very easy, I believe, in our humanness, and I know for myself that I've sat in judgment of myself so harshly for so much of my life. And it was time to begin to walk a different path with it. At times I just didn't know how. Because I just had these other beliefs in me that I was broken. That there was something so horribly wrong with me. And I know we all go through different experiences in our life and perhaps we feel less than, or we feel like we've done something, or we just simply are less than. Perhaps the beliefs that are handed down. Perhaps it's the consciousness, the race consciousness, that's a whole other topic. The race consciousness that's out there that says you are broken. There is something always about you that you need to fix. And that's what's wonderful when we can be mindful of what is streaming through us in any moment to catch that thought. To go, it's like it's like a, a bubble, a thought bubble. I think that's how Thich Nhat Hanh puts it. It's like thought bubbles. And in that moment, when you touch a bubble, what happens? I should have brought my little bubble thing. I use that sometimes. What happens when you touch a bubble? It pops and it's gone. So that you can learn to say, oh, let me touch that thought with an awareness and let it fall away. And let whatever comes into me to allow myself to have that faith that Lori saying about earlier, to let that expand. So in my field of awareness, whatever enters into that field, I'm okay. I'm more than okay. Because I have a different understanding. And in that place, there is no fear. Because to me, mindfulness, another word for it, is heartfulness. Heartfulness that I can walk through every moment of my life and live from that place. Because when I can allow those things to come through me and, and I keep returning to that place of feeling connected and whole, that's love. To me, that's love. That's that space in which we can hold everything. That's what the chaplains are learning to do as Sydney is, is training them and teaching them. Because we hold the space. We're not trying to fix things when Sydney's doing prayer and make things happen and doing a beseeching prayer. We're already knowing that in the mind of the divine, in the mind of all that is, it is already whole and perfect. This is called the guest house, and it's by Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. It may be clearing you out for some new delight. Oh, take a breath. 
the dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. So no matter what shows up at the door of your house, of your temple, you can learn if you're willing and you have a desire. It will happen. You can learn to be the hospitable host. Say, come on in. I have no fear. I know that you have something to offer me. And all is well. And when we're grateful for those things, whatever they are, and we can see them differently through those divine eyes, we can relax. Rather than, oh my gosh, bolting the door and putting on the chain lock and, and, and Lord knows what else to keep them out. Or as soon as they're in there, to try to rush them back out the door. Perhaps you've had human guests that have come into your home sometimes or knocked on your door that you've gone, oh my goodness, I don't think I can do that. I don't want that energy. So as we learn to be welcoming, and this is it, appreciative, gratitude, appreciation, we know those are very powerful energies. They're transformational energies. And they have so much to offer you. And the more you do that, your muscles of mindfulness will grow. Your practices will expand. And a few weeks ago when I spoke about we're always creating something, and more often than not we create by default rather than deliberately, as you expand and become, as I said earlier, the embodiment of mindfulness, you will already begin to be creating on a different kind of default. It will be a divine default. That will become your experience more often. There's power in paying attention and truly being present. There's another uh, book, excuse me, by John Kabat Zinn called Coming to Our Senses. And as sentient beings, as spiritual beings having this human experience, we often forget sometimes what our senses can offer us in terms of being very aware of what is happening. In a moment, we might have a funny feeling in our gut, but we weren't aware of perhaps the thought that just passed through us, but our body is letting us know something. So the more you become in relationship with you, and that's really what a lot of it is. The more you are in relationship with you, and, and in your human you, but in the universal you, then you are more able to expand that relationality out into the world. And your mind continues to expand and grow. And then there are moments when you're like, wow, I'm there. And then you're like, wow, I'm there more often? And, I, and then you're like, I am there. I am that divine mind and consciousness expressing through me and as me. I love this quote by Eckhart Tolle. As soon as you honor the present moment, all unhappiness and struggle dissolve. And life begins to flow with joy and ease. When you act out the present moment awareness, get that? When you act out the present moment awareness, whatever you do becomes imbued with a sense of quality, care, and love. Even the most simple action. That's what I meant earlier when I said mindfulness is really heartfulness. That we're living from that place. Because when you think of spirit or God or whatever you call the divine, if you gave a word that would represent that for you, would it be love? Would it be peace? What would it be for you? Because it's palpable at times 
when we're in that space, the divine grace, that space of ease when things are flowing and we know that we are truly connected and we are one. Freedom. Do you know you're sitting in a chair right now? Are you aware? Maybe, maybe not. Are you smiling? Are you focusing? What are you doing right now? Because oftentimes we're called, most often actually, not, not sometimes, I believe, it's moving from that place of that human being and the human doing to truly just simply be. I think multitasking was brought up last week and how hazard, hazardous that is to your health. I know I used to criticize myself because I was not good at multitasking. Some things perhaps, and, and I used to really pull myself up to other people and go, wow, I wish I could multitask like you, but I would kind of get lost in, in the maze of it all, and I thought, I just need to learn how to do this better. And I can't even tell you one day I finally let it go, and when I let it go, I was more focused and more clear and able to move through and be with the experiences in my life more fully, more fully present, which brought me what? More joy. More, I don't want to call it satisfaction, just more pleasure and enjoyment and truly elevated, if you will, into a place that I would just feel amazing. I would just feel so amazing. In the knowing of the very moment of now, with no attachment, no thing, not just nothing, but no thing, whatever arises, be it a sensation, an event, a memory, the feeling of hurt, sadness, anger, or joy, there's that place, as I spoke about a minute ago, where there's this self-liberating opportunity. Just to say, oh, well, here it comes. I like to think of it, I, I read this somewhere, and this is so great. I've never surfed. How many of you have never surfed before? Well, we're surfing all the time, are we not? Whether it's the internet or in our life, we're surfing in some manner of speaking. But, but it was like as your thoughts and emotions come, they're like waves, and you get to decide which of those waves you want to surf and where they're going to carry you. I know when I've watched specials on TV and somebody, some of these people are, are like riding these really huge waves and they go through all kinds of experiences and then when they're learning, they'll ride little baby waves. It's like, where do you want your life experience to carry you? What waves of thought, if you will, when they enter you with certain emotions? You get to decide, again, as I said, which of those you want to ride to carry you through hopefully a pleasant experience. But although sometimes we are going to crash and we're going to be derailed, I know sometimes I say my thoughts were derailed when I was trying to remember something and all of a sudden I'm like going, where am I? I have no clue how I landed there. Probably like walking Winnie Bob last week <laughs> when Melanie brought that up. Walking around the block in your, in your back and you're like, I don't know where I went. I have no clue. But that's okay. It's being able to chuckle about it, laugh about it, and say, well, you know, maybe I want to be more present. Maybe I would know something. And as I read earlier, then my mind's not clouded by unnecessary things. And what? It's the best season of my life. Every season would be the best season of my life. Every moment of now would be the best moment of now. Wouldn't that be amazing? How many times do we say, oh, I can't wait for whatever. I can't wait to go on vacation. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Did you know what I just said? I can't wait. <clears throat> because what's wrong with now? If now is a gift, and you're learning to practice the gift of the now, and it's the presence, and that's the CE, but I'm going to put NTS, because there's presence in the present. Presence, yes? What is wrong with now? Or we're always
always trying to get someplace else because we have this idea and this belief that when I get to someplace else, I can take a breath. With mindfulness, you can take a breath in any moment. My dear friend Alan, he's my chiropractor, and I love this watch that he has, and I have to get one. I've got to find a refurbished one because that's what he got because the other one's like three or four hundred dollars, and that's just not what I'm about. But he taps his watch, and you know what time it is? Now. <laughs> I love that. If anybody asks you ever what time it is, you know what you can say? Now. I've got it. I'm living in the now. It's always now. Great for Eckhart Tolle when he, he went through his journey and arrived at the place of now to realize the inherent power in now. And it's, it's always there. We get to navigate it, play with it, play in it, share it. That's pretty amazing. Maybe we should just call it the playground of now. Right? Who's knocking at your door? You want to come out and play with me? You want to come out and pray with me? Let's go have fun in the now. That to me is healing in action. That's the activity of God streaming through you in every moment, no exception. And you being open to it and allowing yourself to move with it. There's a flow to it, a movement to it. That's transformation. For every cell, every atom, every molecule, every organ, every muscle, every part of your physical incarnation is imbued, infused with that energy. And it's not about curing anything, because what, what did I say earlier? There's nothing to fix. There's nothing to cure. Healing is happening right that's it. You get it? Let's try it again. Healing is happening. Yeah. All right, that was so much better. Awesome. That's like, Asha, hey guys, let's participate in the song, right? Moment by moment. Moment by moment.
e as senhoras. As we walk through our life, all kinds of things show up on our path. Sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, we may push them away. We may embrace them. We may run from them. Just notice. Did I just say? Sorry about this. No. How perfect. Right? So what's happening to you right now? What are you doing? You're laughing. Isn't that amazing? When things show up on your path that you can just be right where you are, how easy was that for you to start laughing? It just came naturally, right? And whatever is there, if we're laughing, we're usually very welcoming of that most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> this is just being with the fullness, with the richness, with all that you are in your life's experience. Once again, the richness of it, the texture. Once again, alone, you're weaving this beautiful fabric of your life. What are you weaving into that texture? As Susie sits here every Sunday and, and knits or crochets and all the things she does that she's weaving, the, the things that she's creating have got to be amazing because of the energy that's going into them. So if you want to create something, bring it here every Sunday. We can have the whole community in Metro Atlanta coming here to knit and weave and, and do all the things we do to infuse it with that wonderful energy. It's a good time, every time, every moment, to truly be appreciative of your senses as a human being. As your spiritual being, beautiful self, having this human experience to where you allow yourself to truly feel nourished and loved, supported by that very source that comes to you in many different forms. So begin to pay attention as I think Melanie gave you all uh, some homework and some suggestions of practices that you could do during the next several weeks. So I invite you to become even more present with your senses. Just notice what you take in through your eyes, your beautiful nose, the fragrance of God. What is that like? Taste, touch, hearing. I invite you to become a better listener, a more mindful listener, as you create your experience, moment by moment. So grow your garden this spring with joy and laughter and appreciation. And I can't wait to hear what you all have to share and what you bring to hear on Sundays and Sydney's doing the prayer time and a celebration time. I can't wait to hear some of the things that are coming out of your garden. Take some clippings and bring them here. Be interesting, maybe we can have a goal going forward for the next few weeks that you can write down something and put it in the bowl and we could pull those out and say, oh, this is what so-and-so is is growing and they want to share this with everybody and it could be something that we could just have to offer to each other in this community because we are growing a community garden here. 
and that is, that is quite the blessing. Cultivating mindfulness for the health of it, and I promise you, you will feel better inside and out. And your body and all that you are will love you for it. Let's take this to a time of meditation.